Hello everybody, Nepke99 here, and welcome back to the Pixelmon Let's Play series. In today's episode, we are continuing Operation Oval Charm, our plan to complete Generation 3 and get the Oval Charm. So we are actually in our fossil lab here because we have a root fossil that we need to put in here to get another light leap, so we can evolve that. I forgot to do that last episode. Uh, we don't need to do a claw fossil because we already have a second anorith. I think we might have gotten one from our ditto eggs. So we're just going to let this grow here, and then we'll get our second Lie Leap. And our Lie Leap is ready. So just for a little recap, these are all the Pokemon that we caught in the last episode on these three pages here, plus now this Lie Leap. And this is what we still have left to evolve on these two pages. And then these we need to breed, and that's going to be a whole other thing. These are obviously our team, so don't worry about them. <laughs> um, so yeah, there's not too many here. Most of these will level up pretty quickly. And like here, I'm going to evolve this one to a Laron, even though we have a Laron. And then I'll evolve this Laron into Aggron, because it's level 40 already, so it's a lot less levels we'll need. I'll just make it go a lot quicker. So we are at the XP farm here now, and we're just going to level up these Pokemon. We've got them all equipped with Lucky Eggs, so it should go fairly quickly. And I will maybe show some up on evolving, and I'll see you in a little bit. We actually just had a shiny chandelure spawn in here, so let's see if we can get this. Hoping the quick ball will work, but I know these ones can have a bit of a harder catch rate, these chandelure here. Oh, broke free. Um, well, luckily for us, we have a bunch of low-level Pokemon on us. So we'll see if any of these can do anything to it. I guess our Aaron has a... What are those bad is... <gasps> Oh my gosh, it knows Memento. What the heck? It killed itself. So we've got all of our ones that evolved by leveling up in here. And we actually caught a Cosmog while we were there, because every time it's dawn or dusk, I just head over to the Sunflower Plains. It's right there, because we need four of these. Um, we also have a Type Null that I forgot to tell you about uh, right here. I got this one after episode 12, I believe. I just happened to be in the desert when it was dawn or dusk and I dropped down to the stronghold and it spawned. So that was nice. And apparently we have a Latias spawning now. So we actually just have these six right here left to evolve. And these first three just evolve from stones. So these ones are pretty easy. Nuzleaf evolves with a leaf stone. Lombre evolves with a water stone. And Skitty evolves with a moonstone. Our Clamperls will evolve into Huntail and Gorobis, depending on which item you give them and trading them. So for Huntail, it's the Deep Sea Tooth, and for Gorobis, it's the Deep Sea Scale. So if we trade Sim. Two should evolve. And if we trade Sim 3, this one will evolve into Gorbis. And then, as before, if we level up our Nankata up to level 20, while we have a regular Pokeball in our inventory and an empty spot in our party. This will evolve into Ninjask, and we'll also get a Shedinja in our party. So the last normal Pokemon we still need to get is Why Not, which is the baby form of Wobbuffet. So we get this by breeding the Wobbuffet with a Lax Incense, but we don't actually have a Lax Incense, so we actually need to make one. And how we do that is first we make an Infuser, which I will do after I get the ingredients to actually make the incense out of it. But we actually need three corn berries to make to make the lax incense. 
And how we get those is just going to the forest and using this forage ability. And sometimes we'll get a Pokemon like that. But other times we'll get an item and hopefully we'll eventually get corn berries because we actually need three of them. So sometimes you get nothing as well, which always sucks. So we'll just keep cycling through our Pokemon here and eventually, hopefully we'll get one. So I've actually just gone over to the end here, because according to Wiki, we can also find them in the end using Forage. So I figure we can be here and be on the lookout for a Why Not itself. And if we do happen to find one, we can just catch it, and then we don't need the three berries. Uh, if not, we'll just be here trying to get those berries. So we actually just had a Why Not spawn here, so we're going to try to catch this, because we still have not gotten even one of these berries, and we've been here for about an hour. <laughs> Um, I'll still show how to use the infuser and stuff. Um, I did actually get three of another berry that could be used to make an incense. I think actually two different berries I did that with. So I can still demonstrate it and everything for you guys. So first we actually need to make the infuser, which is pretty simple. It's just a furnace on the bottom middle, four aluminum plates like that, two glass bottles here, a piece of charcoal in the middle, and an amethyst up top. And then you'll have your infuser. And then to make the incense burner, you just need four aluminum plates in the corners, four iron bars in between, and a piece of charcoal in the middle. So we just placed our infuser down here, and if you look inside, there's this weird kind of interface. So you need to put your incense burner in the bottom, then your berries will go up top here. We have these three blue berries, which will make an odd incense. And then you just put some fuel in on the left here, and it'll infuse it into this incense burner, and then you'll see we'll get an odd incense. So we just need three more Pokemon to complete Gen 3, and those are the three legendaries that we're missing. So we're missing Groudon, which spawns in the desert hills during the day, so we're going to sit here for a bit for that. We're missing Rayquaza, which spawns in any mountainous biome at dawn or dusk. And we're missing Jirachi, which is probably going to be the hardest, because that spawns in Extreme Hills plus M biome at dawn or dusk. And that one also has a lower spawn rate than Rayquaza, so it's really going to be fighting with it. So we may end up with a few Rayquazas before we get a Jirachi. But I'm going to AFK here for a bit, and I'll see you when we get a Groudon. And we just had our first Groudon spawn here, so let's see if we can get it. And I forgot to mention this can actually only spawn in the clear weather. So if it's raining, it won't be able to spawn. Well, I accidentally just one-shot it. I didn't realize Giga Drain would actually kill a fire type in one shot. But I guess it's ground type too, so it kind of makes sense. Well, time to sit here and wait for another one. And we got another grout on here, so let's see if we can catch this one. Uh, apparently it's not fire type at all, so that's why my thing killed it before, because grass is just super effective on ground, so... My bad. We won't use that this time. And we got it. So we are in our Extreme Hills plus M biome over here. It's like this little patch of gravel and then extends a little bit into these trees, I think. Well, this part's just Extreme Hills plus, so basically just this gravel patch here is what we need for Jirachi. And then any of the mountain area around here can be considered for Rayquaza. So I'm going to AFK here, and we actually have Dusk here. And we'll see if we can get our legendaries. We've actually got a Rayquaza here, and a Lag Spike as well. So we're going to see if we can catch this guy. Well, he's actually going to initiate combat with us. Alright, let's try our Quick Ball as usual. Doubtless we'll catch him. Nope. This is actually the second Rayquaza I've had spawn. The first one I was AFK. And I came back and saw that he spawned, and by the time I was back, he already flew off way too far into the distance. Let's go ahead and try a timer ball here. I don't think it's been quite 
11 turns for the max catch rate, but it should still be a pretty good catch rate. Uh, that'll actually be enough. Huh. What do you know? All right, so we got our Rayquaza here. And we actually just had Jirachi spawn in our Extreme Hills Plus M biome. We actually found a different one that's much bigger, so we have a much higher chance of getting it to spawn here. Uh, let's see if we can find it anywhere. Oh, here it is. A little tiny guy in here. So let's switch to our Breloom. I should probably make sure it doesn't have any moves that can kill itself because we've been AFKing here for a very, very long time. Like, probably close to 15 hours total. And we actually caught it with most of its health still left, actually. So that is the last Pokemon in Gen 3 that we should need, I believe. So we should get an Oval Charm. Possibly. Maybe we have to open our Pokedex or something. Okay, so I went back to the main screen and I went back into the world and now the thing for the Oval Charm pops up. So if we do that, we should have it equipped now. If our world is loading in, it's very laggy for some reason. All right, so I closed the game completely and I came back. Um, for some reason, I was getting a massive amount of lag. Um, but as you can see, we have the Oval Charm equipped here, so our breeding stations should actually be going at two times rate here. I'm going to head over there real quick. So back at the breeding base here, we're going to take these eggs out of here that we have in here already. And our next set of eggs should take just under 19 minutes to be put in here, if this is working right. I'm not sure, we may possibly have to remove the Pokemon from this and put them back in. But I'm going to wait here for about 19 minutes, and I will come back. So, I don't know if it's bugged in the current version, but I can't seem to get the Oval Charm to actually have any effect on our breeding stations here. As you can see, I have it equipped. Um, I waited for 19 minutes, and they're still only in, like, purple stage. So, I've tried taking the Pokémon out and putting them back into the breeding station. I've tried removing the breeding station and putting it back and putting the Pokemon back in there. And I've also tried equipping and unequipping the Oval Charm itself. So I'm not too sure what's going on with that. I've also logged out of the game and came back in. So not too sure what's going on with that. If any of you guys in the comments know, please let me know. I also wanted to show you guys our completed Gen 3 PC boxes. It's pretty cool to have a bunch of full pages in here and ends here, but still got the starters for the next one, so it still goes on for a little bit. But yeah, we've definitely got several full pages now. And here's also an updated look at our legendary board here. It's definitely starting to fill out here. This side over here is almost completely full. And just a quick look at how our Pokédex progress is going. We've got about 315 left to go. Anyways, I'm going to have to go ahead and cut this one a little short again. Uh, Darn Dusk Legendaries take a while to record. <laughs> um, so despite our Oval Charm not working, we are still going to go ahead with our plan for next episode, which is to make a battle-ready team. So we're going to get probably a Hydreigon, Ferrothorn, maybe some other ones. If you have any Pokemon you guys want to see on the team, let me know in the comments below. Anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.